This is lecture three for IE4355, layout planning models and design algorithms. And this is part two for, for this lecture. Uh, there's in which we are discussing different type of algorithms that can be used to construct layouts in facilities and also to improve layouts, um, current layouts in facilities. So here are the objectives for, for the course. I'm not gonna go through them. Uh, but there are going to be some of them um, that are linked to the material discussed in this lecture. Um, for instance, number two, learn formulations, models, and analytical procedures for the study, uh, the study of facilities layout planning. Uh, so the agenda, remember this is part two uh, of this lecture. So in part one, we, we cover the introduction and the basic layout types and the layout procedures. In this lecture, we're gonna focus on that four bullet, which is the algorithm approaches. Um, and the learning objectives for this lecture is to understand the interactions between layout planning models and design algorithms as they relate to facilities planning. So let's go in and talk about the algorithm approaches. Uh, layout procedures presented in the previous lecture provide a framework to construct or improve a layout, but they do not provide a formal procedure or, or algorithm for some of the critical steps associated with layout design and evaluation. The models and algorithms we present in this lecture provide us with ob objective criteria to facilitate the evaluation of several layout alternatives that emerge in the process. Most layout algorithms can be classified according to the type of input data they require. Uh, so qualitative flow data, such as the relationship charts that we have discussed. Uh, quantitative flow data, such as flow matrix expressed as from two chart that we have also discussed. And some algorithms accept both relationship chart and from to chart. Layout algorithms can be also can also be classified according to their objective uh, functions. For example, minimizing the sum of flows times distances, which is this uh, piece right here, the first um, square here showing that objective function in which we have three parameters that are used to compute the, the final cost of the current or improvement uh, layout. Uh, so we have the number of departments and we are going to be evaluating the flow between those two, though, between two departments that we're calling I and J. So the flow from department I to department J, and then there's a cost associated with that, with that flow, uh, which is the cost of moving a unit low one distant units from department I to department J. And then we have also the distance from between the two departments. So the summation for all department combinations in the layout, uh, the summation of these three parameter associated with the cost, of those movements between departments is what we are trying to minimize. Uh, we have another objective here, which is the maximization of the adjacency score. Uh, so we, we want to use this information. To, it could be qualitative data in which we wanna make sure that those departments that needs to be close to each other and those departments that are needed to be far away to each other that we are taking into consideration that information when we are uh, designing our, our layout. So we want to maximize those adjacency scores. So those, for those departments that we know, we want them close. We want to make sure that we, uh, that the objective of our, our algorithm is to make sure that those are close to each other and those that are supposed to be far away to each other, that, that also is taken into consideration. So for this class, there's, I mean, there's a lot of algorithm approaches for facility layout planning 
and construction of layouts and improvement of layouts. But for this class, we're gonna be focusing on four algorithms. Those are the ones that are in red in this slide. Uh, the graph-based method we have discussed already in a previous lecture. So in this lecture, we're gonna focus on the craft, the MCraft, and the mixed integer programming, MIP. Uh, the first one is craft algorithm, which is craft stands for computerized relative allocation of facility technique. Uh, this is an improvement algorithm, uses a discrete representation, which means that distances are discrete. Um, same distances and the location of the centroids for departments are also discrete. Uh, we use the front two matrix and the distance based objective and pairwise exchanges are considered. So we, we exchange departments in our search for a, an improvement in terms of the location of these departments within the layout. Uh, this algorithm was introduced in 1963. Uh, Craft is a tool used to help improve the existing layout of facilities. And the facility is improved by switching two or three departments to help arrange the facility in an optimal floor plan. Craft method considerations. This procedure requires the following inputs, a front two chart, a cost matrix, and also the distances between departments, which are determined for a given layout and also an initial layout. The major features of Craft are, it attempts to minimize the transportation costs, and the transportation cost, as we shown on the previous slide, is, is the multiplication of the flow between departments times the distance times the unit cost of moving uh, such product or information or whatever you are moving between departments. Uh, craft is a path-oriented method. The finite layout is dependent on the initial layout. So as we mentioned already, it's an improvement algorithm. Requires an assumption that move costs are independent of the equipment utilization, and that move costs are linearly related to the length of the move. So what are the steps of the graph algorithm? First, you have to determine the department centroids. Then you have to calculate the interdepartment rectilinear distances. Step three is to calculate the initial cost of the layout by multiplying the from two matrix with the cost matrix. Step four, craft, then considers all possible two-way or three-way department exchanges and identifies the best exchange. After you have identified the best exchange, you have to update the layout and calculate the new department centroids. The above procedure is repeated until no further reduction in the cost can be obtained. So let's look at this example. We're gonna start, I mean, we have eight departments in this, in this example, and we're gonna start applying the, the craft methodology or the algorithm to this layout. So we have an initial layout and we want to see if we can improve its layout. But before we have to, we, we, before we start doing some exchanges to search for improvement, we have to know what is the benchmark, what is the current cost of this initial layout. So that's what we're gonna do first. We're gonna compute the cost of this initial layout. Uh, we're gonna do that by first finding the centroids. So to find the centroids, we have to identify a, an origin. So a zero, zero point. In my case, I'm gonna be using this point at zero, zero, but you can choose this corner, this corner, and this corner. At the end, the algorithm should give you the same solution. Uh, as long as you're consistent with finding the distances using the same point. But in my case, I'm gonna use zero, zero here and I'm going to start listing the centroids for, um, for this layout, this current layout. 
So I have eight departments. I'm gonna list them all here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And I'm going to find X and Y for each one of them. X and Y is gonna give me the coordinate for the department. So for department one, the centroid is right here. So I wanna find the coordinates for that centroid. So let me use a different color. So I'm gonna use one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five. So if I count for X, this is one, two, three. So that's my coordinate for one and one, two, three in terms of y. Let's do two. So this is six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So in terms of for two, in terms of x, we have 13. Uh, in terms of y, we have one, two. So, sorry, two. Let's do three, so three is right here. So 14, 15, 16, so this is 16, and this is 16.5. So 16.5, and then in terms of Y, we have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So it's eight. Okay, so we did the first three. The rest is, is the same, you follow the same process. So for four, we have 9.5 and seven, three and seven, 9.5 and 11, 1.5 and 10, and 4.5 and 10. So these are my centroids for this initial layout. The next step is to find the distances between the departments. So we are gonna find the distances for this layout, okay? But in order for, for us to save some time, we can, I mean, first, we can go the, the time consuming way of finding the distance for each possible combination, like the distance between one and two, one and three, one and four, one and five, and the distance between two and one, two and two, two and, two and three, two and four, two and five, or we can use the information that we have on this table, which is listing the costs associated with the flow between departments. So in this table, we have the cost between one and three, between one and seven. So between one and three, between one and seven. We have a cost between two and eight, we have a cost between three and five. We have, so three and five. We have a cost between two and eight. We have a cost between four and two. I'm sorry. Four and two. We have a cost between four and seven. We have a cost between six and one. A cost between six and three. A cost between five and eight. And a cost between eight and four.
Okay, so remember our goal now is to compute the cost for this layout. Uh, the cost is only is is depending on the flow and the distance. So is it, if there's no flow, then there's no cost associated between those two departments. So we have identified from this matrix, the cost matrix, the the flow between, or we have identified only the departments where there's flow. Okay, and we are only gonna compute the distance for those because those are the ones that are going to represent any type of cost for this layout. If we compute the other distances, we are gonna be computed, com, we're gonna be um, multiplying those distances times zero, a cost of zero, so they're not gonna represent any, any cost to the final layout. So that's why I, I chose to just look at the cost matrix identify where's flow uh, in this case there's flow between one and three one and seven and then just compute the distance for those and you'll see how the cost is computed after this slide but let's find the distance for these uh, departments so what is the distance between the centroid of department one and the centroid of department three that is the question so um, so the distance is rectilinear. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, thirteen point five, fourteen point five, fifteen point five, sixteen point five, seventeen point five, eighteen point five. So that's my distance. And I can do the same thing between one and seven. So this is the first distance. One and seven is one, 1 1.5, 2.5, 3.5, 4.5, 5.5, 6.5, 7.5, 8.5. And we can repeat the process for all these combinations, let's say two and eight. So from two to eight, how much is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight and a half, nine and a half, ten and a half, eleven and a half, twelve and a half, thirteen and a half, fourteen and a half, and a half, fifteen and a half, sixteen and a half. So this is between two and eight, sixteen point five. And we can repeat the process for the rest of them. So let me just include that information here. So this is 14.5. And then this one is 8.5. This one is 11. This one is 4.5. This one is 14.5. This one is 10, and this one is eight. So now we have the distances between departments for those departments that have flow between them. For the rest of them, I don't have to compute the distance because there's no flow, and when I compute the cost, I'm multiplying the distance times the flow, no flow, you're multiplying times zero, they are not gonna make a difference. Uh, so only compute the distances for those that have a flow associated to it. So let's calculate the initial cost. This is our benchmark. So the initial cost for our layout. Okay, so here there's there's some information that we don't need the rest of the the rest of the matrix should be the same um, so let's compare we have 18.5 8.5 we have 16.5 we have 14.5 8.5 and 11 4.5 14.5 10 and 8 Awesome. 
So now we are going to compute the, calculate the initial cost. So it's going to be the distance times the cost. So it's 18.5 times 20 plus 8.5 times 2. plus 16.5 times one plus 14.5 times two plus 8.5 times one plus 11 times two, plus 14.5 times 10, plus 10 times five, plus 4.5 times one, plus A times two. And this cost is gonna be 678.5. So that's the cost of the initial layout as it is right now. So the craft, these are the first steps, right? We have identified the centroids, we have computed the distances and we have computed the cost. So the question now is, can we find a way to move departments, exchange departments, um, and improve this cost? Meaning that can we reduce this 678.5 cost for this layout? So the step, the next step of the of the algorithm states that we should consider every possible, all the possible two-way department exchanges and then identify the best exchange. How, how do we identify the best exchange? Well, we, after we do the exchange, we, um, the exchange means that we are switching the centroids. Like if I want to switch one and four, you can see that that switch has happened. Um, if we want to switch one and four, that means that I'm switching the centroids, the decentral information to four and the centroid information to one. That's the exchange for one and four. And then we want to compute the, the new distances based on, on that exchange and also compute the cost as we did here. Okay, so it takes time for, for us to, to do this manually. Typically you will put this into a computer and in the computer will do this for you. But in order for you to, to program something like this, you need to understand how the algorithm works. So before we continue, okay, so the step number four says that Kraft then consider all possible two-way department exchanges and identify the best exchange. Well, you need to understand that you, the exchanges, how, which ones are candidates for exchanges? The answer for that is, only equal areas, as is stated here at the top, only equal areas or adjacent departments are feasible exchanges. So adjacent departments are those that share a wall. So one is adjacent to two, to four, and to five. Four is adjacent to three, but one is not adjacent to three. Okay, so that's why an exchange between one and three is not possible because they are not adjacent to each other, they are not sharing a wall, and also they don't have the same area. 
okay? Because three is bigger than one. If they had the same area, then you can, even though they are not sharing a wall, you can do that exchange. If they have the same area, you can do that exchange even though they are not adjacent to each other. But in this case, that's not the case. Um, so only equal areas or adjacent departments, those that are sharing a wall, are feasible exchanges. Okay, so that has to be clear. So in this case, we will consider every possible exchange. So in this case, uh, let me list possible exchanges. So one is adjacent to one and two, one and four, and one and five. Those are those are good. Two, two and one, two and three, two and four. Three and two, three and four, and three and six, and so on. So you can list them all. Let's do four. So four is with one, four and two, four and three, four and five. Four and six, four and eight, four and seven is not feasible, and so on. So we have we can do the same thing for five, for six, for seven, and for eight. Um, but for now, I want you to focus on on what's gonna happen next. So we have three possible exchanges here. One and two is possible because they share a wall. One and three is not feasible because they are not, they are not adjacent to each other and they don't have the same size in terms of the area. And exchange four, one and four is also possible because they share a wall. So after considering all possible exchanges, um, so to consider craft exchanges, uh, craft exchanges the centroids first. So that's what you can see here. So for exchange one and two, you can see that these two have exchanged their centroids. So the centroids for two are now in one, the centroids for one are now in two. Same thing here, one and four, the centuries for one are now in four, centuries for four are now in one. So craft exchanges centuries first, then calculates a new table of distances, and then the new layout cost. All possible exchanges are evaluated. The one with the most savings is selected. All centuries distances and actual layout are updated. So what I'm gonna show you next is the, the the solution for this first iteration. So exchange departments one and four gives the most saving. So after computing the, uh, after looking at all possible exchanges and making, switching the centroids, computing the distances, um, and computing the cost, we found out so this final iteration, or this fine, this is the final uh, result, is that one and four gives the most savings. So making one in four and four in one gives you the most savings. Um, so in, in this um, table, you can see the updated distances when you make these the centroid for four, and these the centroids for one. Okay, so you have found that this is the best one. So after you find that, then you can say, okay, this is my best. Uh, so I can now update the centroids based on switching those two departments. And that updated matrix with the updated centroids, which is here, here, is listed here. 
Okay, so, and this figure right here is showing you how the new departments would look like uh, in the new layout. That doesn't mean that we are done. At this point, we have completed the first iteration. Let's calculate the cost of the layout after exchanging departments one and four. Okay, so this is the, after updating the, the centroids, I'm going to compute the, the new cost. So let's calculate that new cost. So if you remember, the cost equals the distance times the reward. So this is 20 times 7.5 plus 2 times 11.5 plus 1 times 16.5 plus 2 times 14.5 plus 1 times 11.07 plus 2 times 8.43 plus 1 times 4.5 plus 10 times 4 plus 10 times 5 plus 2 times 7.43. And that cost is equal to 355.79. So as you can see, after making this exchange, computing the distances and updating the centroids, the comparing all possible exchanges, exchanging departments one and four is the best. And this is the cost of making those changes. And as you can see, when you compare this against 678.5, which was the original cost, the savings are big. It's almost half of the of the cost. So that exchange is saving you a lot of money. However, we are not done. After making this, um, the algorithm tells you, okay, you have to, using this new layout, this is the new layout, Okay, by switching four and one, are you done? Okay, or can you find a, a, another improvement? So using this new layout, now you start the, the process one more time. Um, so after performing the second iteration, you find out that exchange five and seven gives you a better cost than this, than 355.79. And after that, you do another iteration and you find out that exchanging five and eight gives you um, a better final, uh, a better cost, which in this case is going to be equal to 345.29. And then after finding that, you go again. But what happens in the fourth iteration is that you are not going to find a better cost at 345. So at that point, the algorithm tells you you are done. This is the best you can do. 345.29 is the final cost. And this is the final layout. So you see there's some exchanges here and here. Um, so in terms of questions related to this topic in the exam or in the homework, you'll see that I'm going to ask you to as specifics. I'm not going to ask you to do the whole thing in the exam. Like I don't 
want you to consider every possible exchange, every possible uh, iteration. But I can give you a piece of the iteration and tell you, ask you questions about it. Or I can ask you to complete one piece of the iteration. So you should know how the algorithm works in order to, to answer those questions. Um, craft procedures adopted for using crafts are determine transportation costs of each department interchange, select and implement the departmental interchange that offers the greatest reduction in transportation costs, repeat the procedure for the new layout until no interchange is able to reduce the transportation costs. What are the pros of craft? Evaluates many exchanges very quickly. Initial layout can be captured accurately. Craft allows for flexible department shapes, dummy departments, fixed departments, non rectangular buildings. Uh, the, the cons results in odd departmental shapes like we saw in the example uh, limited exchange options you might find like a greedy algorithm you might get stuck into a local solution maybe you are not able to find the best solution with the algorithm and craft is path dependent so the starting layout makes a difference um, then the second algorithm is called mcraft is microcraft. This is a PC implementation. Um, so it is similar to craft, except it can be it can exchange two non-adjacent departments. Layout formation technique that allows easy shifting of departments. Facility is divided into bands, and layout formed by starting at the upper left hand corner of the building and sweeping the vents in serpentine fashion. Two-way exchanges form until no further improvement is achieved. Um, what are the limitations of MCraft? Maybe hard to fit the existing factory layout into vents. Bandwidth assumed to be the same for all vents. And a fixed department may float when certain unequal areas department are exchanged. So there's an example in this slide. There are eight departments and there are two fixed departments, one and seven. So those departments cannot be moved. One and seven. MCraft, and we have information about the area, the number of grids, if you are dealing with uh, square paper, and the flow between the departments. MCraft asks for the length and width of the building and the number of bands. MCraft forms a layout by starting at the upper left hand corner of the building and sweeping the vents in a serpentine fashion. It follows a particular sequence of department numbers, which we will refer to as the layout vector or the field sequence. So this is the example. Uh, the layout shown in this figure was obtained from the layout vector 1753248.6, which is supplied by the user as the initial layout. So you can see the serpentine faction here. You have these arrows moving in this uh, type of flow. And we have three bands. This is band one, band two, and band three. MCraft performed four iterations or four two weight exchanges before terminating with the optimal layout. The first iteration, you have departments three and five. Um, 
with these many units. The second iteration has departments three and eight. You can see the improvement. Uh, the third iteration has departments three and four. And the fourth iteration has department two and three with this cost. You can see how each iteration is decreasing the cost. And this is the final MCRAS um, layout. Other methods and tools, the mixed integer programming, in which we formulate the facility layout problem as a mixed integer programming model by assuming that all departments are rectangular. So if you're familiar with operation research, we have this objective function that is minimizing the cost associated with the distance, the cost of flow, and the flow between departments. So now we are including in the objective function the size of the, of the departments. And then we have uh, multiple constraints in this model. Constraints are associated with the size. They are also associated with the flow. And, and for the purpose of this class, we are not, I mean, I want you to be aware, and if, you're, if you are familiar with operation research, that you can formulate this problem and attempt to find an optimal solution by using this uh, model that is formulated here. Uh, of course, I'm not gonna ask you to solve this. For that, we have uh, software in which you can input this and, and you can get the solution. Uh, obviously, you will need the data for the facility. But if you go to industry at some point and you are asked to improve the layout, I want you to be aware of this option, this integer programming uh, problem. Uh, that is, this is the formulation. Uh, if you have the data, then you can input the data and solve it. Uh, you don't have to formulate the problem from scratch. Okay, so this concludes this lecture uh, in which we discuss algorithm approaches for improvement and for layout optimization in facilities. Uh, the most important uh, algorithm for, for, the, for the lecture is the craft. We spent a lot of time discussing that one. Um, uh, MCraft, you're, you're, you're required to be familiar with how it works. Again, that's, that's the type of algorithm that is, is made to be implemented in a computer. Same thing for the mixed integer programming. Um, I want you to be aware that that formulation exists in case you want to use it as an alternative. So if you're familiar with operation research, you can formulate that problem, input the data for the, for the layout that you're trying to optimize and solve and find the optimal solution.